Okay, so it's been an eventful morning so far. I ran over to Canadian Tire to buy this little sand blaster, and uh, I ended up locking myself out of my truck, having to get a spare key brought over. Just overall, it took way longer than I thought. But I picked up this little sand blaster unit. Now, this is not going to be very good uh, for the pure fact that it was on sale. It's regular $50, it was on sale for $12. But I figured for $12, bucks, I might as well give it a shot. So I'm obviously not going to first test it on the plane here. I don't, that would be really dumb. Uh, I'm going to just set it up, play around with it, see if I can get figure out how it works, you know, all that. And I'm going to make sure it actually is going to work before I take it anywhere near the plane, because the plane looks really nice right now, and I don't want to intentionally screw that up. Well, that was a bit of a joke. Uh, so those two bottles, and we have it. It did it. It did okay. It didn't do nearly as good as I would have thought it would do. But I don't know why I thought that that would work. So I'm gonna next thing I'm gonna try is just paint stripper. I got a comment on yesterday's video from LTW Carpentry saying to just use some paint stripper. I think that's gonna be the best option. That probably would have been the better option to start with. Uh, then to get rid of the rust that's on here, I'll just put it back in that rust solution for a little for a, an hour or so today. Don't let that soak because yeah, that sand blaster is that was that was a complete joke. So in, in case you're wondering why I just threw that thing in the garbage, because in order to do what you can see I've done here, you know, I removed a little bit from around the number seven area here. I cleaned off a few of the smaller areas in that. Uh, and that's that's as much as I was able to do with two bottles. I paid $12 for that whole package. Each of the new bottles of that grit costs $15 a piece. I probably need three or four more of those bottles in order to clean this whole thing up. That's not worth it. It was a little $12 experiment. I don't care. It's a Mastercraft tool. It can go in the landfill. I don't care one bit about it. But the one thing that I actually am just noticing is that doing that little bit of blasting that we did do, uh, it has revealed what looks like might be a serial number that's right under where the tote of the plane sits. It's the serial number for when it was made. Okay, so I was looking actually, so I was actually looking at this last night. The way that, so the way that these are numbered is that they'll have, it's a, it's a three digit number. So it'll have the first number will be one, two, three, or four to say which quarter of the year it was made in. And then it'll, after that, it'll have the actual year it was made in. It looks like we've got a four, six, two. So that means it was made in the fourth quarter of 1962. So this is a very old hand plane and that just got so much cooler. 1962. I'm gonna go get some paint stripper and then we'll come back and probably let this thing soak in paint stripper for a while. Then we'll clean that off. Then we'll move back to the rust solution. Then we'll just keep moving along. Luckily, when we're doing all that, we've got all of these other parts, you know, the lever cap, the blades that actually need to be sharpened and cleaned up and all this kind of stuff. So we still got plenty of work to actually be doing while this, the, well, the body is doing all the stuff that it needs to do. Okay, so I actually did have some of this uh, heirloom antique refinisher crap. Uh, it's supposed to be a gel coating that you just wipe on. It's not supposed to be as aggressive as like normal paint stripper. Now again, I still personally think that sandblasting is the way to go with something like this because that's you know that that's going to fully remove everything. Uh, but paint stripper seems like a perfectly good way to go too. So not really going to uh, knock it until I try it. Okay, so it's safe to say that the sandblasting worked a thousand times better than the paint thinner. The paint thinner, I don't think even really removed anything, uh, but I also have no idea how to use it because there are no instructions on the stupid bottles. I think I did it right, smoothed it out a little bit more. Uh, we still have lots of paint on there, but I, but I think I've revealed all the areas where there's rust. So now with it back in the rust solution or the rust removing solution, uh, we should be able to get it back. We should be able to clean up all those areas and then just paint over it with our rust inhibiting paint to then, you know, keep everything nice and clean there. That was also not fun. I had to go rinse my elbow real quick because I put it down on the table where I think there's a little spot of that uh, paint thinner stuff, our paint remover stuff, and it, it started burning. And uh, yeah, that did not feel good. So I just went and rinsed it under some cold water. Should be good now. If I really get into doing this whole, you know, hand plane restoration, you know, tool restoration stuff, 
I definitely would go and buy like a smaller uh, enclosed sandblasting unit. So I honestly don't know if you could buy one that's small enough and big enough to fit something like this number seven in it, but I definitely, it's something I would look into because I want to get into restoring more tools like this because I think it's a lot of fun. It's a really interesting thing to do, but definitely the paint remover didn't really work. Uh, the sand blaster worked great, but it's just too insanely expensive to do it just kind of blasting in general. So yeah, pros and cons to both. Neither of them really work very well. We're just going to go with what we have and just going to paint over it. It's not going to be beautiful, but again, this is going to be a tool that's just for me. So I also put the lever cap back in that rust removing solution. And while those things are sitting in there, we're going to start working on the blade and the chip breaker. So I want to get them all nicely cleaned up, a little bit more polished up than they are right now. They still have little touches of rust on them that I want to go back and remove. We're going to make sure they're nice and flat. Then once we're done with the blade and that, we'll move on to the frog and get start getting that cleaned up. We do need the body of the plane, you know, pretty well done to, in order to start working on this because we have to get those bottom flats, make sure that they're all sitting nicely. But we can at least start with the front side of the frog once we get the blade in that. Way. Okay, so our blade and chip breaker are all now ready to go. Now the thing that I'm trying to figure out here is I've never used a hand plane like this before, a bevel down hand plane. All I've ever used is a bevel up like my low angle jack. So this whole construction of, you know, how does all this stuff goes together is very just confusing to me at the moment because like I said, I've never used a plane like this before other than the one that I use for scraping glue. And I don't actually take care of that one. So I've never actually disassembled it and, you know, tried to clean it up like this. But it actually is really interesting. So, so one of the big things I found online that is important to do is you want to check the edge of your chip breaker because when your chip breaker is sitting on here and it needs to be, I think if, if I remember correctly, it's about a 16th of an inch away from the edge, you want to make sure that there's no gap in there because the whole purpose of the chip breaker is to push the chips up and away from the blade. And if there's a gap, those chips can get clogged in there and start to jam up. So I just very, very carefully removed material and just with the edge of my stone here, I just removed a little bit of material to just adjust that angle. Because when I had the chip breaker sitting on there initially, there was just a little bit of a gap running through there. Now that I've gone through and flattened it, there's now no more gap, you know, so it should be should be just about perfect. Now on the blade itself, I actually went through and lapped both to the side so that they are perfectly flat all the way through. So that took a decent amount of effort. And I got a comment on yesterday's video from Tungsten Carwide saying that when he does this, he normally only will flatten just a smaller portion. So I wish I'd read that comment sooner before I went through and lapped both sides to get them perfectly flat. But also it's not really a bad thing having both sides lapped nice and flat. Now for this edge, I set my Veritas sharpening jig to 30 degrees because what I found online is that the initial angle that this is honed to is 25 degrees from the factory. And then I found a lot of people saying that they sharpen them to 30 degrees in order to start to kind of create a micro bevel that then just becomes the bevel over time. So I'm not sure why you would want to not stay at the 25 degrees, but again, I found so many sources saying to sharpen it to 30 degrees and even the brand new uh, PMV 11 blades that you can buy from Lee Valley, they're all honed to 30 degrees. So I just, it seemed like the, the proper thing to do. So I just sharpened it up to a nice 30 degree angle. Again, not that dramatic of a change compared to the 25 degree, but that is something that is worth mentioning. And so now to actually put these two pieces together, all we have to do is put this little uh, threaded knob into the uh, chip breaker here. And you just wanna lightly loot, tighten it in there. And then if I remember correctly, you're always supposed to put these two blades like that slide it back and then twist it because you never want to accidentally drag your chip breaker across your freshly sharpened edge there. We're going to bring it up nice and close uh, about a 16th of an inch away and then tighten it down. Now again, there's so many of you that follow me and that watch my videos have a lot more experience with this stuff. So if you have more knowledge than I do about this stuff, I would love to hear it down in the comments. But for now, I think that that is going to be perfect. Again, this, this is going to be a perfect plane for me to learn how to use a bevel down plane uh, because, well, it only cost me 40 bucks, so if I destroy it, 
it's not that big of a deal. And I plan to get a lot more of these bevel down planes now that I've found that it's so much fun to actually go through and uh, refinish them. So now the body of the plane should be good to come out of that rust removing solution. We should have removed most of the, that rust that was underneath the paint. So now we're gonna go through, clean it off, and then we're going to apply a couple coats of paint to that top area there. So that was a busy little bit there. So we've got the frog, I got that all flattened up. The blade is sitting on there nice and flat. The lever cap is all, all cleaned up. It's holding onto the chip breaker nice and flat. Everything about this whole assembly here is looking really good. We move nice and smoothly with the adjustment knob here. The only thing left to do with the frog is to adjust it so that it sits nice and flat on the actual body of the plane. So I already went through and cleaned up some of the rougher rust and then the original milli marks that were on there. As for the body of the plane, it's looking really good. I'm glad I didn't go through all the effort of stripping out all the paint that was on the body before because I just don't really know if that is particularly necessary. Now, it probably would look a little bit better, but again, it's a hand plane, it's a tool. It's meant to be used anyway. It's not exactly something that needs to be, you know, perfectly, you know, nice, perfectly sheened paint. So I went for a gloss paint. Now, I, I do kind of regret this. I think that a semi-gloss would have looked better. Uh, you're supposed to use a gloss or semi-gloss in here because that way dust doesn't stick to it as much you know it kind of it'll slide off easier whereas if you did like a matte paint it would have a little more of a tendency to stick but yeah i think this is going to look really good so two things that i want to mention on the front of the plane here and on the back as well as these top edges i decided to just go ahead and paint them over i know on my veritas plane the top edges are painted that front and back edge aren't on the veritas plane but i figured on here there's not really much point not having it painted so I don't think it really affects anything. And if I find that it's getting in the way of something or, you know, it needs to not be painted, I just have to sand the paint off. So hopefully within the next hour or so here, we have a fully functional plane. The only adjustments that might have to be made, and I say might, uh, is the bottom of the frog here, just to make sure it's sitting nice and flat on those surfaces. Other than that, the blade is already sharpened. Everything is good to go. So I'm super excited to see how this thing looks. It's looking, you know, it's just beautiful right now. I am just ecstatic with how well this thing is coming out so far.
Okay, so first test cuts were not the magical experience I was expecting them to be. I didn't think that this thing was gonna work the first try. Uh, I think that the issue is that I didn't get the blade as sharp as it needs to be. Uh, because right now, it, the way that it's cutting is it's cutting like it's really just scraping the wood, which does not seem right. Never mind, I am an idiot. I obviously did not lock the chip breaker down tight enough, and I mean, I'm gonna have to go back and resharpen, but yeah, you can see that the chip breaker is the front edge there, and then the blade is currently hiding behind the chip breaker. So it's not really surprising that I was not able to cut nicely with the chip breaker. So like I said, I've never used this type of plane before. Uh, it's gonna be a big learning curve. I fully expect it to be. But yeah, I'm just gonna go and uh, resharpen that blade because uh, jamming it into the back of the chip breaker is probably not gonna help keep a nice sharp edge. So I'm just gonna resharpen it anyway. Okay, so there we go. It is fully up and operational. It cuts beautifully. We still have some minor issues. I'm not gonna lie about that. Uh, currently when I cut with it on some area of the plane, uh, there's something that is dragging and leaving a small mark or a small track, which is not a huge issue because this isn't really a finishing plane. It's a edge jointing plane, uh, but I'm gonna try and isolate and try and figure out what it is. Because the way that it feels on here, it feels like a raised bit, which I know from my low angle jack and the amount that I've abused that thing, that that usually means that there is a chip in the blade. But looking at the blade, I can't find anything that looks like a chip in it. So the other possibility that I also, again, know from my low angle jack is that there might be just something stuck to the bottom of this plane, which is not unlikely with the amount of rust spots in that, that is dragging and kind of cutting a burr as it gets dragged along. But again, this feels like a small raised section. There's two of them in parallel with each other all the way through here. So it's obviously something something somewhere on the plane uh, needs to be cleaned up a little bit further. And then checking this piece with my straight edge because that is probably the most important thing of a long hand plane like this is that it leaves a straight edge. As long as we're not sitting on those two uh, high points, we are perfectly flat all the way across, which is beautiful to see. It means that I actually managed to flatten the sole of this Perfectly, you know, we're getting we're able to get a nice flat edge out of this whole thing The only thing that I really need to practice with this plane is getting the blade You know set to the right angle because on a low angle jack All you do is tap this back knob with like a little hammer or I use the back of a chisel sometimes uh, Just to knock the blade into position whereas obviously most of you guys know with a plane like this You have the angle adjustment or lever just I don't know what the heck it's actually called But you just move this little lever to either to the left or the right to change the skew of the blade in that Obviously, I just need a little bit more practice and you know actually taking some time to set it up and deal with it but for now I am just super thrilled with how this thing has come out the fact that this thing was so trashed yesterday and now today it is a fully functional tool with a razor sharp edge that it can be used to hand plane a piece of wood and this is honestly just so much cooler than I ever thought it was even going to be like I knew I knew it was gonna be cool to you know clean up and have and have my own you know old school tool and all that you know something that I literally saved from a pile of rust but this is just so much cooler than I ever could have hoped for. So we're gonna finish off the video with some just nice footage of this thing. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, just blow off the dust that I got on it. And yeah, I'll take some nice video of it so you guys can see it in all of its glory. But anyways, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this project and I will see you in the next one.